Hi and welcome. My name is Alexandra and I normally blog over at Hedgehog Hollow. Today I am here as part of the Craft Tangles design team with my first project, which is a quartet of Father's Day ideas. We have a wonderful gift bag, two cards and a gift tag for you as well. So be sure to check out the link blog post which has more pictures and descriptions as well as my blog hedgehoghollow.co.uk for regular craft tangles ideas. Happy stamping and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So the first project we're going to tackle is the uh, shoes, a very clean and modern card that you can use for Father's Day or a male birthday, uh, a really nice uh, standard mail card that you can use for any occasion. It's a top folding card and you can pop the appropriate sentiment in there and we're going to be using the Craft Tangles Father's Day set to be doing this, uh, a dapper set as it's called. So the first thing you want to do is this background here. And for that I have a piece of 8.5 by 11 that's cut lengthways. You could use half A4 or whatever the appropriate uh, size is in your country. Now you're going to fold that in half and I'm going to make a nice crease along here. And you want to have some kind of mat to absorb um, some of the overflow sprinkles. You can see here that I've been doing uh, this card originally on this surface, but this will take up the majority. Now I'm going to use my Gansai Tambi starry colours for the gold, and there's some lovely shades of gold in the pans there. And I'm using my Prima Metallic Accents because it's got a nice metallic black in it as well. And there's some lovely other colours in there too. Now you can use any watercolours you have to hand, but I like these in two in particular because they have some mica in them, which gives them a really nice pop. Now this is my pipette water bottle and I'm going to prep my pans by adding some water into the colours that I know I'm going to want to use. And that just lets those absorb for a few moments while we're talking and it gets them ready and nicely dissolved for use. Now I just did this by a flicking technique, so I'm going to mix this up. You want it to be reasonably watery so that you get those nice droplets all over. And I'm using a number eight brush here. This is just um, one that I bought in a big box store. And then I'm going to just go over my surface like this. And that will give you a, major a variety rather of different size uh, droplets. And we can keep picking up pigment. And if you tap the, this end of the paintbrush you'll get different splodges than you'll get tapping this end. You'll get some bigger ones tapping closer to the brush. And I'm just going to really pick up a lot of pigment on this last go so that I have that nice variation. Then I'm going to wash out my paintbrush just in my water to the side there and I'm going to pick up some of the black and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to mix in that water that we added and I added a few less of the black because they're quite striking, but I want them reasonably evenly spaced. And that is it. Now I'm going to put this to the side to dry and we'll bring it back when we're ready to assemble our card. So while that's drying, we can stamp our panels. So this is our best guy ever set. It's a photopolymer set that Craft Angles sent me. So I'm just going to peel this out and you can see it's been well loved already. They're a lovely deep etched photopolymer stamp. They stamp really nicely. And we'll be using some of the other stamps in it later. I'm going to use my Misty here so that I can get a nice, deep, strong black image for us to use our glossy accents over. And I'm just going to pick that up on here. And I'm going to use my stays on. Uh, we're going to use stays on again later on. So I want to just use one ink where possible. And it also gives me that really nice, strong black image. So you can see, just to get that really deep image, I'm going to stamp it a couple of times. And that's the great thing about using a stamp positioner, is you can do things like this. You can keep going back over and over until you're happy with your impression. I'm going to do a touch more, just round there by the laces, like so. So there's our shoes all done, super, super easy there. And we're also going to do our sentiment and I'm going to use the bottom of this piece. So I'll just move my magnets. I'm going to give my stamp here just a bit of a wipe over. And when you use stays on, and it's not normally recommended for photopolymers, but I've never had an issue as long as I use um, and give it a really good clean. So I'm going to use the stays on cleaner. 
and that would be my top tip and also some of my regular stamp cleaner just to give it some extra moisture and then you can pick up most of that stays on ink that's on there because when we use some lighter colors later in the project you're going to want not want to see that black image that you've just added on there as well so we'll pop that to the side for now and we can do our sentiment down here now it comes with two great sentiments in this set there's dad you're awesome or the best guy ever i'm going to go for the best guy ever and i'm going to pop it down the bottom here on the same piece of cardstock and we're going to heat emboss it just to give it that nice pop to go with our shoes once we add that on there i'm just using my powder tool to remove any static i'm going to stamp with versamark ink and everything has some gold on it from where we were just doing our lovely background. I'm going to stamp that down and I'm going to use some Ranger Ultra Fine Black Embossing Powder which will give you uh, a nice sentiment. It doesn't get all in the middle of those smaller letters but it still gives you that nice raised glossy effect. And you can see there how nice it gives you uh, the outlines. If you find like on the guy you've got a little bit extra just give it a good flick from the back side and you'll see that most of those edges have gone off. I'm going to go and heat emboss this. I'm also going to cut out my shoes with my circle and then we can assemble our card. So now we're ready to assemble our card. So I just gave my little card base a helping hand with my heat tool to dry off those watercolour backgrounds. And because it ended up a little bit um, misshapen, just run it through your big shot, just like this. Um, just run it straight through, no dies or anything. And it gives you a much flatter card base. It's still a little bit of curvature there, but on the whole, it ends up nice and straight. And of course, when you put it through the mail, it'll straighten itself even more. Now I've cut my sentiment down just to around about a one inch strip. I do that by eye. And I've left around about another inch at this end. That's so that I can create my own banner effect. So what I do is put a snip down the middle there. And then I meet it corner. And again, from the other corner. And this way you can create any size banners you like. You don't need a punch or anything. You just can create your own just there. So that's my banner to go on the bottom here. Also I added this nice piece of uh, burlap or hessian at the back. Now I have it as a uh, ribbon and each side it has these um, bound edges so that it doesn't fray but I actually want to fray it so I snip those off. This is approximately a two inch wide. I have a six inch wide piece, uh, ribbon piece and I just snip off what I need. And then I just pull off some of the ends so that we have that nice frayed look to go behind. And we're gonna stick this down on here. Now, there's lots of different ways you can stick it, but my preference is just to use a tape runner. I use the tonic tape runner pretty much for everything. And it also sticks this hessian or burlap down really nicely too. And it doesn't leave any residue. And you can also just pop a bit more down if yours won't stick. Then we have our shoes and I pre-cut these on two coordinating circles and we're just going to stick those together. A nice even border around the edge and I'm going to use a couple of dimensionals just to pop it up uh, so that there's some nice layers to the card. And we're going to stick this off to here. And of course we want to stick down our best guy ever and I've got some more dimensionals to do that with. You can also use foam tape, um, either would work absolutely fine. And we'll stick this down here at the bottom. Now the finishing touch is to add that shine to the shoes so that when it's dry you end up with this lovely shimmer texture that you can see there and it's nicely raised like an enamel piece so they look like a painted shoe. Now to do that I'm going to use glossy accents. I keep that just at the back of my work area here and I keep it in one of these when it's out of my drawer so that the glossy accents is always at this end ready to use. It has a nice precision tip on it and if you need to you may need to stick a pin if you don't use it very often. It also works as a really great adhesive and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace out the shoe and fill it in. So imagine you're icing a cake, use glossy accents in exactly the same way, do an outline and then fill it in. Around the top I just did a nice outline. And you can use this just like a piping bag or the bottle to control the flow of the glossy accents as well, whether you want a thick piece here, where the shoe's a bit thicker, and then you can ease up on the pressure where you want somewhere thinner. So again, I'm gonna do that outline. 
I need to push the outline out a little bit and then you can just fill it in. Now this will take probably a couple of hours to dry depending on how thick your coat is. You'll know when it's dry, when it's uh, clear all the way through. And just make sure that whilst it's drying you keep your card flat on your surface like this because if you do tip it up then the glossy accents will just run and then that will have ruined the beautiful card you've made. So let's move on to our next projects. So we're going to make a gift tag, the background to our second card and a hessian bag all using the same technique. So our, for our final three projects I use the same technique of using all these smaller elements on the background of this card, on the tag and on this lovely little bag to create these beautiful backgrounds and then we're also going to stamp this element on the front here. Now to do that we'll start with these two here because these are super super easy. We're going to take, I find my larger misty is easier for this, I'm going to take my card base. Now this is a craft coloured or desert sand. I use the Nina card bases. Again eight and a half by eleven cut lengthways or you could use half A4 or whatever your appropriate piece was. And we're going to want to lay out our elements to do our background pieces. So I have my best guy ever set here and this can take um, as long or as quick as you'd like to be depending on how you want your placement. And I'm going to use all of the elements. So there's the tie, there's the uh, watch, we have a lovely bow tie and my husband got married in some of these uh, more traditional British things so it's really fun for me to be able to use them on cards for occasions for him. And I'm going to put my glasses up here somewhere, let's see how the shoes fit on first. I'm going to put the glasses down the side. Now you can also put these as snug or uh, as much spacing between them as you would like. And I'm going to move these right down so we get to the bottom. And I may well stamp something else down this side in a moment. But what you want to do once you've done those arrangements is I'm going to close my lid and pick them up onto my stamp press like so. And then I'm going to stamp them in Versamark ink so that I get that tone on tone. Now I'm also going to make sure that my card piece is snug in this bottom hand corner so that when I move it in and out I always go to the same place and I know it's going to work perfectly. I'm going to give those a nice good press down. Now I'm going to do them slightly stronger because I want a little bit more detail for the effect that I'm going for. Again, a great thing about stamp press that you can just keep stamping over and over. And these do have such beautiful details in them with the clock, like so. So now I'm going to keep doing that until I'm happy. And then I'm also going to do exactly the same on a piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to use some stays on this time or any black ink, whatever your preference is. If you want another black ink, I like the My Favourite Things hybrid, so you can use either. But for this, I had been using the stays on purely because I didn't want to use lots of different inks throughout the project. But I'll just show you how this one looks as my day to day black. And again, we stamp down, make sure I go over all the different images to get that detail. I'll do that once more and then I'm going to stamp both these panels exactly the same and I'm just going to move all over the image and I will fast forward through that so that you don't have to see me keep replaying uh, the same thing. <laughs>
So now we can finish up these projects. Now for my tag, I just took this background piece and one of my stitched uh, uh, squares rather that I have in my stash and I moved it around until I was happy with the layout of one of the places. So I think this time I'm actually going to choose down the bottom here. Now I do like to include the glasses, but I don't know if of course you can always keep turning it until you find the way that you want it to be. And I think I'm going to use this bottom panel down here. I'm going to use a little bit of post-it tape to keep my uh, die in place and then I'm just going to run this through my Big Shot. So this is how it comes out, this lovely stitched square there with that lovely detail around the edge. Now this piece, you could cut a nice long uh, gift tag. You could use it for all sorts of things or some background pieces. And I'm actually going to cut out this uh, bow tie element in just a moment as well. So I'm gonna pop this to the side. And to finish it off, I just punched a hole in this corner and popped some ribbon through it. And I also picked out an area that I wanted to pop up just to make it look a little bit more fun. I'm gonna pop up the face of this watch because of course it would have a glass face. And that just adds a little bit of interest and a nice bold ribbon. So whether your dad's favorite colors happen to be red or blue um, or any color that you fancy popping in there. Again, make sure to keep this flat until this is dry and then it'll have a nice clear face as well. So now we can pop these away as well and hopefully I won't catch them. And we can finish off this card here. So I have a piece of plain white cardstock and we're going to stamp out our gentleman. Very dapper gentleman, I think. And to do that, I'm going to use my mini Misty and the same stamp set again. So let's grab that, pop our piece of cardstock in. And I'm going to line up all of my stamps here. And then I'm going to stamp them out in this beautiful burgundy. And I also did stamp, you can just see underneath, I stamped the bow tie in the burgundy as well. So now you've seen that I stamped everything out. This was the brick red from My Favourite Things Hybrid again. And then I matted it on the black and then on the white and then again on the black. That just has a nice bit of dimension. It adds some crisp colours and it just gave me the effect that I wanted. Now you've seen I also do most of my matting by eye. I line up one edge and then I do the rest on this uh, cutter. This is my favourite cutter. It's called a Cutterpede from EK Success. This here is around about a nice quarter of an inch. And I also have all of these acrylic guides in here. They're actually the runners for the blade. It's a nice rotary blade that slides backwards and forwards. It comes in a small and a big size, but I just line it up by eye as depending on how big I want the mat to be. Now, all I have done is I've prepped it by putting some foam dimensionals on the back, which I will now peel off. We have our lovely contrast piece that we stamped using the first mark, which will just show up in places underneath. And we're going to put this onto the middle of our card. And again, you can add a Father's Day or a Happy Birthday sentiment, depending on what your occasion is, even a nice anniversary card as well. Now, finally, I popped up the um, bow tie. So I have taken the bow tie from that piece we had left over and I've added some glossy accents. Now, they're not quite dry yet. But what I will do once they're dry is I'm going to fussy cut it out as I did with this one here. You can see that's got that nice gleam to it. And then I just popped it up on a little bit of foam with the sticky dimensionals and did that to finish off our card. So that's our third project finished. Now that we can get onto our bag to put our gift into. So this is our final project and we've been doing this pretty little bag that I'm going to put inside uh, some little English toffees for Daddy for Father's Day. So you can use it for a gift bag for anything there. Now it's super simple to make and I also just wanted to mention on the previous card, I forgot to tell you that I also added glossy accents here on the glasses just so that you can pop those out as well and you can see here how it looks when it's finished. 
So these are the bags that I bought. I bought a ba uh, bag of 10 really inexpensively and they had this bow on, but it was only glued on with a glue gun. So they peel off really easily and you can either stamp over that or use the back side. It's entirely up to you. And for this, I'm going to use an acrylic block. I'm going to use that acetate piece you saw me using earlier. Now I use this to either go over here where I want to decide where I'm going to position things or when you saw me using it earlier, it was just so that I didn't get any ink transference. So I didn't get black where I wanted the Versamark. I didn't get Versamark where I wanted the black. So I often just use this. This is the back of this piece of photopolymer stamps and they're really handy to use just as a shield so that you don't transfer colour as well. So I'm going to pop this on here for a second and I'm just going to do a rough layout of where I'm going to do all my pieces to start with because this just gives you that little bit of planning without having any ink or anything else on your uh, piece. And of course you can move them around this way, work out what fits where. So I'm again going to use as many elements as I can. And I really love this dapper gentleman look as well. So we'll start with these and we'll see how we get on. So for each one, I'm just going to be using an acrylic block because using your Misty or other stamp press will be quite difficult on the burlap just because of all the different variations particularly where this ribbon runs as well. It's not going to work particularly well. So I'm just going to lay this on my workspace next to me so I can see what I've decided to do. First of all, I'm going to pick up the shoes. I'm going to use some stays on. Stays on will dry on fabric. It's watertight uh, and it's nice and thick that it will show up as well. It would be the best ink for this project. And we're going to pop these in this bottom corner down here and I'm going to press it down. Now, I've got a, quite a good impression there, but I'm going to go back once more. And what you can do is pop your hand underneath. And the great thing with the burlap is if it doesn't line up exactly perfect, it doesn't matter, but you can get a fairly good uh, placement by eye. And then you're going to give it a good press like this from the reverse side. And then when you lift it up, you've got that much better impression there as well. So we can take off our shoes. We'll put them back here so we know where we can use them for now. And now I'm going to just go all over this piece in exactly the same way. So there's our beautiful Father's Day quartet of products. I hope you've enjoyed following along this tutorial. Don't forget to visit the link blog post that's in the description underneath this video, the Craft Tangles website, and as well the blog to visit all the other design team members to see what they're creating with their stunning stamps and other paper crafting products. You can subscribe to this channel as well as the Hedgehog Hollow channel. Either click the subscribe button below or hop on over to the blog for more instructions. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Happy stamping! Bye.